Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to be showing you how to do some spray painting with stencils. Yep. Um, my name's Steve. I'm Ben. This is my son Ben. Um, Ben's going to run through all the bits and bobs you need to be able to do some beautiful artwork using spray paint and uh, stencils. Yep. So first of all, of course, you need a mask for health and safety reasons and some gloves so that you're going to get paint on your fingers maybe some stencils if you're going to use them they were cut out earlier today yeah. um, canvas and whenever you cut out stencils obviously you have to make sure parents are with you if you're yep. using some sharp using scissors or, or something like that always make sure that parents are with you and yep. always have uh, parents must always be around especially if you're using spray paint as well it's very yep. important very important and then the most important part Spray paint. Right, well spray paint, the thing is there's two different types of spray paint. There's most spray paint you have to use outdoors, it's, don't use it indoors, mm. it's, it's quite smelly and it's not very good for you. Um, and hence the reason why you, you have to use masks. But this stuff here, Liquitex, is brilliant. You can use it indoors, it's just water based. Um, yeah, it, so it's cool. We're going to be using Liquitex today and we're using it outdoors, but you can use this indoors as well and it, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we better um, start doing some painting, eh, Ben? Yeah. All right. Let's get our masks on. Right, uh, there's all different types of techniques you can use with a spray can. Um, the amazing thing is that you can just uh, make it up as you go along, really. I mean, what you can do is, for instance, if you're going really close to the the surface you can do great lines really nice thin lines if you want to do something a bit wider come away from the, the actual canvas instead of being so close come away and you could do much more fadey type techniques and really sort of nice you see it's really good fun you can really experiment or you can even turn the can to the side and you do some really crazy techniques like that so there's all kinds of different things you can do it's, it's really incredible with a spray can um, and the good thing is with this sort of paint is that if you don't like what you've done you can go over it again it's really good so with that in mind with those techniques in mind we're now going to move on to actually using stencils as you can see there Ben's shaking his cans he always shakes the can for about two minutes or something like that what it does it breaks up the paint and it makes it flow out of the can nice and evenly and it's not doesn't spurt all over the place and it's really it's much more controllable and it's, it's, it's really enjoyable when you do that so Ben's gonna now put the first layer of his picture using a, a small little stencil there and he's just little bursts little bursts going, and he's just filling the spaces and when he takes that away it's gonna be amazing Ben maybe if you um spray uh, just from a bit of a distance possibly just to just to sort of like miss the edges possibly that's it there can miss the edges and make it much more sort of there you go that looks great do a bit more in the middle maybe at the top middle that's perfect and see where see how that comes out when you pull that away wow look at that now here we have you could call that a first layer which is fantastic and you can just lay stencil on top another as many stencils on top as you like and it just you can create so many different techniques so many different styles and it's all down to what you want really all right now ben's um going on to his second stencil it's a lovely little uh what's that some sort of flower is that sort of lotus yeah um yeah and uh ben's going to use about three colors in this one so he's going to be doing like a color on the top and then fading it into another and then fading that into a third color and it really will be impressive so uh all right, Ben, go for it. Don't forget your distances and uh, go for it. Remember not to put too much on because remember paint can sort of drip as well. And you don't need that much. You don't get too close. That should be fine, Ben. Ben's going to fade a second colour into this. So when he fades it, what he does, he doesn't get too close to the actual canvas because, yeah, then he just fades. That's it, that's beautiful, really mists it. And then onto a final and third color. 
And it's amazing, it's so exciting at this part because you know you're gonna pull the actual stencil away and you don't really know for sure what, you know, finish you're gonna get until you actually pull it away. It's really quite exciting. All right, here is the, the magic moment. Go for it, Ben. Wow, look at that. How many colors is in there? That's great. Well done, Ben, great job, man. Hello there. I uh, hope you enjoyed our stencil spray paint tutorial. Um, hope you have lots of fun, I'm sure you will. Uh, just a couple of things we have to go over, what's really important. Um, number one, um, with the stencil making, always make sure mum and dad's there or parents are there. So especially when you're using sharp equipment like uh, scissors and so on. Uh, rule number two. Always wear a mask. This is obviously for health and safety reasons. That's right. Uh, number three, um, when you are spray painting, always make sure mum and dad's there again. Um, and you can't spray paint on everything. You can't go around spraying, up, spraying on people's walls and yeah. stuff like that. This isn't graffiti. This isn't, that's, that's not a good thing. Always make sure that you, you get permission of where you're painting, hopefully on a nice big surface, a big canvas like this. And uh, yeah. Uh, the fourth and most important rule is have fun. That's right. Enjoy yourselves. See you. Okay, take care. Bye. Great. Thanks, Steve and Ben. My name's Morgan. I'm an artist, and um, today I'm going to show you a bit more detail about how you can make your own stencils. So, for stencil cutting, you need a good scalpel to cut the paper or plastic. This uh, safety scalpel is very good. We tend to use these more. Um, adult size ones but uh, they, they can be a bit dangerous so just watch watch your hands if you're when you're cutting the paper and plastic just make sure you're always cutting away from you so you're not in any danger of cutting your hands because it's very very sharp uh, so we need some good strong card to draw our image on and also for making stencils these state agent signs made from plastic are very good material because you can find them everywhere for free and uh, people are throwing them out and they make very good waterproof long-lasting stencils so today we're going to make a stencil of a cat because i like cats so yeah i'm going to show you how to do that okay so i've drawn a simple stencil now to show the process of cutting my name here, Morgan. So I'm just gonna show you how testing the stencil is gonna work. So I'm gonna paint lightly and evenly all over the letters so they get a good even coverage. Like so. But as you can see, with certain letters like the, the A, the O, and the, uh, the R, wherever I've cut around the edges, it's left a big gap where there should be a little shape in the middle of these letters. So what I'm gonna introduce to you is the concept of gap bridges. Okay, so for the second version of my name, the stencil I've made this time, I've made little gaps between the inside of the O and the outside of the O, and similar for the R and A. So we'll see the different effects this has when we cut the stencil. So this concept is called gap bridges, because we're making little bridges to span the gap between the inside and the outside of the letters that are in the alphabet, such as these ones circled, that have internal shapes, not just letters made out of individual lines. So I'll just draw these little bridges here so you can understand what I mean. And then I'm going to demonstrate the different effect this will have once you recapped the same stencil. Uh, 
Okay, so this time you can see how I've made little bridges for the O, the R, and the A, and this time the center of the letters are not falling out. So let's show you how that looks when we paint that as a second version of the stencil. Like so. You'll agree. Looks much nicer with the centers with the little circles in place. Okay, so next here I'm gonna make a quick stencil of my cat, Kato. This little moggy here. So I've taken a photograph of her and put that on the computer here and I've got a piece of paper stuck to the screen. So I'm just gonna make a quick tracing of that to help with the accuracy. Okay, so I'm just testing the stencil now with my cat modeling next to me. Little Kato cat. Always there, by my side, to help out during these <coughs> funny art classes. And there's my little signature in the corner. So let's see how that looks. Maybe a little bit of a touch up around the edge. Beep, beep. And there it is. One cat stencil. So I'm using a few different stencils to add to this painting so it's going to build up in a variety of colours and a few different shapes just to show how you can build one image from multiple stencils. Let's try some lettering also. So here you can see some previous stencils, not the cat, these letters we've cut before. So it's the entire alphabet really, it goes from A to Z, all the letters in between. So if you like, want to make any kind of words, you can just choose each individual letter. And then you've got uh, a way to make graffiti stencils again and again and again with the same font. Okay, so I'm going to paint the cat's name above the cat. Her name's Kato, K-A-T-O. So. It's going to show you how the stencil alphabet works. A little bit of overspray, but that's okay, we can repaint that later. We'll just add the next letter to cover it over. So it's gone over the edge of this, the uh, stencil there. See, there's the gap bridges. Done. Just keep the middle of the eye looking good. So, again, I'm using water based paint for indoor work, so it's non toxic. But if you're painting outdoors, you'd want to use a uh, more permanent paint, probably. Oil based paint is more weatherproof. I'm just going to paint a bit around the edge. It's like a nice blue sky. Okay. Uh, I reckon that's done. Okay, and there's the finished artwork.